SAS is in a class of tools called CSS preprocessors. CSS preprocessors have been around for quite a while, but they've really started to gain popularity in the last several years. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at what is a CSS preprocessor, what are the benefits to actually using them, and why are they becoming popular now, and then we're going to finish it up by looking at some of the most popular CSS preprocessors that are out there today. So let's dive in and start with the basics. What is a CSS preprocessor? At its most basic, a CSS processor really is just a scripting language that extends regular CSS, and then you use some sort of program or application to compile that scripted language into the regular CSS syntax that your browser is expecting to see and use. So it's just a matter of basically learning a new language that's very similar to CSS, but has some additional things that you can use in the language, and sorting out how you're going to get that compiled into regular CSS. When it comes to reasons for using a CSS processor, um, there are actually quite a number of reasons and uh, the reason that they're becoming so popular. So you can uh, write sort of cleaner, more readable code in your CSS files. You have lots of reusable pieces, so you can sort of define something uh, in your CSS and then just reuse um, a shorthand for that or reuse the chunks of CSS that you've written without having to actually literally write it out every single time that you need to use it in your code. And there's ways of visually organizing your CSS code that makes it easier to read and see what's being applied where. You also get some flexibility to do things on the fly. You have um, various things you can do with um, conditions. So if this, then do that. And you can do uh, things like calculations. You can use math and you can modify colors based on a variety of things that sort of happens as you go, rather than having to actually hard code that information directly into your CSS. You also get exposed to a lot of uh, snippets, libraries, um, things that other people have written to solve common problems, and you can simply, it's very easy to import those into your CSS and reuse what other people have created. You can also, once you've sort of created your own way of approaching a problem, you can share that with other people, either generally in uh, the community, the web community, or let's say on your team uh, working on a project, you may come up with a solution within the CSS um, that you would like everybody to use, and you can sort of bundle that up and then let everybody use it really, really easily. Um, and the other really nice thing is one of those common problems that people solve using CSS preprocessors are cross-browser compatibility issues. And there are a lot of libraries um, of what they call mix-ins available that solve these common problems. And then when you write your scripting language, your CSS preprocessor language, when that gets compiled into the regular CSS that browsers read, it adds in all of the information that's needed to make sure that your CSS actually does work across all browsers. So it's a huge time saver in terms of having to troubleshoot and track down and make sure that you're writing the correct code for all of the different browsers that you're trying to target. There are a number of CSS preprocessors that are available today. The three main ones that are quite popular are SAS, LESS, and STYLUS with SAS and LESS probably being the two most popular ones um, that people are using these days. 